go. So if you do not want to be filmed, you can turn your cameras off and we'll do a Q&A at the end also. Um, so hopefully I'll have a, enough time with that, but I wanna be able to give you guys. And um, Catherine is my co-host today. Um, she has a wealth of knowledge um, and please ask any questions there. She will stop me if I need to explain something that I'm working on now. Um, and she's also really great about answering different questions, but let's try and stay on topic for right now. And then if there's something that might maybe off topic at the end, um, we can ask those questions then. Sound good? All right. Um, so my first question that was from um, just an observation. It was from uh, Elliot. We were talking last week about uh, padding and margin. And I was saying that I don't use margin. I try and use just padding. And he made the statement, padding is for the inside of the element. Margin is for the outside of the element. So I thought that was really good to kind of note. Um, so I wanted to look at that. So we're going to go to um, my pages and my, my home page. And we'll look at that on the front end. And like I said in the first one, I always try and have like multiple windows open because I like to go to the front end to look to see how everything looks on that aspect of it. But then I also have then like my edit tab with um, my um, list view might be open and stuff like that. So the first, uh, the first group that I have, um, what I did was I went in and I added uh, in my styles, if you go down to your padding under dimensions, there's the three dots. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for people. Um, the three dots is where you can turn on and turn off so, you can, uh, so that you can see those. You can also do a reset of each individual thing with under within dimensions. You can also then reset all. So I've turned on the margins too. And uh, so right now I am just using um, the default padding, but I can turn that off. So if I do this, you can see that my padding adds um, above. Uh, the margin is going to add outside of the group block. So you see how that um, this blue kind of line here, which is, um, let me see if I can change. No, I'm not going to change that. Um, so if we look on the front end, you see right here that that's that margin margin and a fun tool if you are are brand new is called the inspect to or developers tool so i'm on an hp des desktop if i right click and i scroll down into my tools there's an inspect you can also go up to the three dots and under settings i'm sorry more tools whoops don't want that okay so Um, under um, more tools, you have the developer tool there. So it's the same, same thing. So what this is, is I'm going to try and keep it here. If you scroll down to this inspect tool, there's a couple different sections. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for a second. Um, you can change the format of this over here in the three dots. So you can have it on the side. Um, or you can have it, I prefer the bottom. And what there is, is it shows you your code. It also the, does this, but it also has this padding box. So I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller right now, but I made this a little bit bigger. So if I hover over this, I can see where my content is, okay? And I can have the dimensions. If I hover over to the next, that's my padding. And so then I can see what my padding is. And then if I go out, I can see where my margin is. So right now, the default is a minus 104 on the sides. So that's nothing I did. I did a 24 at the top and bottom. So you can see that. 
Now, the fun thing is, is that you can play around with this. So if I double click on the padding number and I can change this number by using my arrow keys so I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. Um, and this is nice because then I can look at it on the front end and find kind of get the right number. So it's just a fun little tool that is easy and it's a good visual on where the padding is as opposed to where the margin is, like Elliot had mentioned. Um, so yeah, let me refresh that because it kind of, it's wonky. All right, so my next question was from Jean. It was from um, session two. And she was asking about why are the post columns displaying are as rows? Shouldn't they be next to each other, not beneath? So if we look at the front end, um, I added, I have three columns, okay? And in the column is a query loop. And each of these query loops is pulling three of the latest posts. Okay, so let's look at that on the back end. So I have my group block, and I'm going to close this side down for a second. And when I open my group block for here, I have another group block inside, and then I have my columns block. So your columns block is going to be um, up and down, okay, column from top to bottom. So in here, I can, then I'm going to open up my settings for columns. I can adjust how many columns I want. Do I want three? Do I want four? Uh, and do that. So I have three right now. And inside each column, I have a query loop. So the query loop is pulling from the posts. Okay, so I have a bunch of posts that I made and it's doing from the newest to the oldest. But as you noticed that they're all the same. So how would I get to be able to see nine posts of the all different ones, right? Um, so this is where the query loop, if you click on that, go up to the toolbar and this little display setting controls your offset. So I want, I'm gonna to go to just two items per page. So that means two items per my column and I'm gonna offset that. So what that means is that the next column is going to, and I forgot, I need to go to the second column, hold on. Cause I don't wanna offset the first one. I wanna offset the second one. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to two and then I'm gonna offset it by two. And then I'm going to go to the third one and I'm going to click on that, bring it back down to two per, and I'm going to offset this by four, I believe. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to save and I'm going to go to the front end. I'm going to reset. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So see how I'm able to offset those. Now you notice that because of my images that I came in, they are not all the same size. So uh, one thing that I can do is to go in and change up, let's see. I'm gonna try it in my columns first. Okay, I need to, go into the image itself um, or the query loop. Let's try that. So the query loop doesn't have that. Okay, so the featured image, and I wanna go into and original aspect, and I'm gonna go to square. So let's see what that what happens there. So I forgot to save it. <laughs> so we'll hit save. And we'll refresh. All right, so the first column I have squares. So I need to do this in all of them, in all my query loops. Go to 
close this up. So in the list view, sometimes it's hard to get to the bottom ones. So sometimes you have to like close up other things in order to um, get down here, which is a little frustrating sometimes. All right, so we're gonna go here. And again, we're gonna just add a square. And we'll close that one up and we'll do the last query. Go to featured image. Go over to settings and aspect or ratio. All right, fingers crossed. They all come out. There we go. Okay. So that's how you would um, make them all the same. Now there is the new grid block that I haven't played with yet. So that might be another option, but this is the way for pulling posts um, that are gonna be different. And you know, you can add in the title of your post, the date, things like that. I just tried to just keep it basic for right now uh, to just show you the columns and the query block. All right. How are we doing on questions? Is there anything pertaining to the two things I just did, Catherine? Yeah, so there were a couple of questions um, to define offset, which I explained was the, the number of posts that are skipped before outputting the posts. Then someone asked, what does output mean? And that means display. So when you offset, uh, you set the number of posts that are skipped before you display the posts. And then um, there are a couple of more related questions. So someone is asking, is there a way to apply these query loop settings to all the columns at once rather than one by one? I don't know if you want to answer that. Th that? Um, I don't think there is. So I, I don't yeah. know if there, anyone knows of a way to, to do that, but I don't, I don't, I think that's a, a block by block setting. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you did a pattern, maybe a synced yeah, pattern. Yeah, you can make a synced pattern. You can make a you... sync pattern and have it be, yeah, just be a, a a column post, so that if you did one column, then it would do all of them. You'd have to, yeah, just name it uh, the pattern and then sync it. Um, that would be my first guess. I have not tried that. Um, yeah, let me know if you uh, try that and, um, and, and see how that would, works. I think it would probably need to be the query loop that is the synced pattern, not the column, because I think the columns yeah. go in there when you insert the columns posts. And I don't, I don't know if you can swap those out individually with patterns, but yeah, this is a good, uh, right for experimentation. <laughs> <laughs> and so Debbie asked a follow-up question about the output and the offset um, Debbie wants to understand, is this to prevent duplicate display? And yes, it, yes, it is. It's so you don't have the same posts repeating over and over and over. Yeah. It's you skip a bunch so that you only have unique posts. Mm -hmm. in this case. Especially if you want to display, um, display uh, more than two or three. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, th that's why the, um, I have two in the first. So that's why I would offset two for the next one. Uh, if I offset only one, you'll see that then I would have a duplicate. So I'm going to refresh this. So see how I needed to go to two. So one, two, then this would be three, four. Um, but right now I one, two, two, three. Um, so that's why if I got to the third column, then it would be an offset of four. Um, so depends on how many things you have in your column and then you have to do a little math. <laughs> Perfect, I think that's all the questions we have so far. Awesome, all right. Our next one is uh, again from Jean and thank you. Um, adding a login. So let's look at the front end real quick. And um, so adding a login, she wanted to be able to stylize it where would she put the CSS for that? And um, I'm using a login block for this and we're putting the link in and I need to go into my header. So I'm gonna go back to appearance and the editor 
I'm going to go to patterns and the header and click on that. So if you noticed here, we have the navigation and then I've added the login log out block um, block. And this can be it for anything. Like if you were wanted to customize a, um, a button or, you know, uh, a link to like a payment or, or something. So uh, what we would do is to go in and you want to go into the global styles because if you start putting your CSS into each individual page, you kind of get lost where it's at. So I'm going to come back out to my dashboard. And I'm going to go to the styles, and this is going to open up my global styles, edit styles, global styles um, toolbar on the side. And over here, down at the bottom, add your own CSS to customize the appearance and layout of your site. So this is a place to keep all of your CSS. Now, some people might prefer to use a plugin. There are several plugins out there that you can put all your CSS into that one place. We're trying to make it easier for beginners. So we're trying to show you kind of the more of a front end approach as opposed to opening up um, code. And if you you don't want to add it to the uh, your, your back end, your code, because then if the th when the theme updates, you're going to kind of lose this. So if you, you're almost putting it on top of your theme, um, right here. So I'm going to take the code that she had and she wanted to add um, some decoration to and change up her login. So we're just going to put it here and there we go. Okay. So you can see how it changed. She did some styling there and she was able to um, add that right there and then just click save. And then we can see it uh, and it's going to save it in the global styles. So save that again. And when we look on the front end, we now have a stylized um, button for that, okay? So those are always some fun little things that you can do with um, code. I can also, you know, um, just without, I can add some stuff. Let me go back real quick and go into patterns. You can add a lot of stuff without even. So if I click on here and I can change my, um, there we go. Okay. So I'm into the settings for the, for the uh, login block. So if you go into, um, it can, uh, there are two settings, display login as a form. Uh, redirect to current URL. There's also some styling. So it's not as much as you know you would hope, but um, we do have, we can change the font. We can um, line height, decoration, we can add. So now that, because I put that code in, I can't do anything there. Um, there is no option to change the background color. So um, adding that CSS would be beneficial in this instance. Um, that's probably one of those blocks that hasn't gotten some new styling options. Okay. Um, and our last or our next question is from Hans. Um, why is there sometimes no option for setting the width Example full width displayed in the block toolbar for the group block when creating a post or a site. The icon is completely missing. Could this be due to a setting in the theme JSON of the theme 2024? So we went to the experts, our friend Nick Diego, um, to clarify this. So let me get back out here. And I'm going to go to leave that. Go back to my page. So when you have a group block and this group block, I have another group block inside of it, okay? So what happens is what he's talking about is this little icon. Let me make this a little bit bigger. 
um, this little icon up here, which um, does your align. So we can have um, max, uh, wide width, and full width. So the, those options are available. If I turn off this toggle over here under uh, layout settings for the group block, and um, refresh the page, oops. Um, so it's still there for this group block, but if you notice down here, it's not available for this group block. Um, so our we don't have that option to make this a wide. But if we go up here and we can, um, when we have this option, we can change the width also too. So if you don't like the um, default width, you can change, or if you like your content a little bit wider, um, that's when you can put your own things in. So it has to do with, you know, the group inside of a group kind of thing. Um, and if you toggle this on and refresh, so that's on the second one. Because I know somebody's going to ask, well, wait, you, you don't have the toggle on. Um, it doesn't appear there, too. So that's one of those little things. Uh, Catherine put in a request to the documentation team to um, this would be really good to add to the group block documentation so that people are aware of, of these kinds of little things that, yeah. It gets so it gets me so confusing, confused, right? <laughs> that um, being able to um, to do those things. All right. Um, so the last um, one was somebody had mentioned um, last week about, and I think they even mentioned on the first one, and I apologize for being so late on this. Um, the media text block. So let's let's add one of those go back to making my screen a little bit smaller um, for that. So I'm gonna add after, and I'm gonna do a media text block, okay? So you do have a pop-up window and you can do an upload, a media library, or use a featured image. So I'm gonna do a media library. And I like this one of Amsterdam. And I need some um, filler text. So my favorite is Cupcake Ibsen. And what we want to do is to, I forgot, to add a group block. All right, so I'm going to add that group block. I'm going to put the media into it. There we go. All right. So let's save that. And let's see that on the front end. All right. So it doesn't look like much right now. Okay. So we need to do some um, spacing and, and kind of the full width. So let's go into our group block. And I like to put my toolbar up here. Um, you can do that by going over to the three dots on the right and under view, it's a top toolbar. So if you don't, then it appears on top of the block. Uh, and I just like to have it up here and it's a, a personal preference. Everyone's different. Um, so that's where you'll find mine. So we'll go into um, a full, full width with that um, and hit save. And the one thing I found with the adjusting the alignment on that is that sometimes it takes a couple things and sometimes it goes like backwards instead of, um, so yeah, so see how it like, it went back when I did a refresh. So hit save. And um, so sometimes you have to click on that a couple of times, which is kind of weird. Let's try it. There we go. 
All right, so we're good with that. Um, and then we want to go over to our settings and we're going to go to one of my favorite things is the block spacing. So we can go here um, and we might need to look at the media and text also has a, an align. So you wanna do that full width. There we go, okay. So let's take a look at that before I do any adjusting because that might just solve it. Well, that's a little too big on the image. Um, <laughs> looks nice. This looks nice here, I like that. So um, I can, let me close this for a second. And you can see that there's a little dot here on the image. So that tells me that I do have the capacity to um, shrink this. So I can make it a little bit smaller with that. I'm gonna save that. And then we'll refresh the front end. So it's a little bit better. I do need some padding because I don't want it to go off the screen here. Uh, so that would be good. So I'm still in the media text block. Um, and this is where you can kind of decide on, do you want to put the padding within the media text block or within the group block? Um, either way would be good, would be okay. So I'm just gonna add some padding. I did a four on the media text block. All right, so I like that. Um, still need to resize the image just a little bit more. Um, and this is where the editor and the front end don't always match it and kind of bugs me, um, but it is what it is. If I open both of these, if I take this off, it's a little bit better to see. So I can kind of sh shrink this down a little. Um, I also have some settings that if I go down, I can do resolution full size, I could do medium, or I could do a th some thumbnail. The thumbnail gets blurry. So remember, this is the resolution um, of the image. It's not the aspect ratio. Um, I also have this setting here that I can adjust to, um, to that too. And that's under the settings. If I go into the styling, um, I can add a little bit more padding to that. So if I do this, I can add padding. Um, oh, the one thing this doesn't have is the block spacing. So th that's the only drawback. I really like the block spacing because that could add like some um, spacing between. So I might have to click on the paragraph and add some dimension, go under dimensions, add some padding to the left side and bring this over. There we go, okay? So then that adjusts a little bit more. So it's just the things that you need to play with. There we go. Um, this could become, you know, I could add a little bit more padding in the group block, I think. And it's, it, it comes down to, you know, your preferences and what you would like the site to be. So, yeah, I guess the block spacing doesn't do anything because, but let's, so I'm gonna take that off. And that didn't do anything. Um, but like the margin, you only have top and bottom margin. You don't have side to side margins. Um, you can also then click on and do a custom. Um, I like to switch to REMs because it's more mobile responsive than pixels. Um, do we can. Add a lot. Um, in that instance. So 
there we go. All right. Um, how are we on questions? No other questions so far. All right. Um, so let's look at a couple of other things. Um, for this site and so let's go in and um, add another page, okay? So we can go into our pages and we can do an add new page. So remember that you can choose from a pattern. Um, there's several patterns available. Or if you don't want to um, have a pattern, you can just click and close that. So we're gonna do an about and we'll hit publish. So when we go to our front end, we need to then add it to our navigation. Um, so then we'll go to appearance and editor, go to the navigation. And we can open the list view. And we're gonna click on edit the header. So then this just brings it uh, the header into focus. So under our navigation, we can um, add a block. And as you can see, my about page is there. So I can just add that there and click save. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about the styling because I know with putting the login, um, button, it pushed my navigation over too much. I'm not going to spend um, time trying to like move it back over and, and get it all situated. Um, but just realize that this is a row block. Um, so you can take a group block and switch it to a row over here um, or into a stack or you can transform it into a grid now. So, um, but because you want things in a row across, uh, that's why that this switched over to that. All right, so we have our front end. Now we have our about page. We can click on that. So another way we can do is go up here to edit the page. So I wanna look at um, just toggling on the block inserter because there's so many different blocks that you can add and there's a bunch of other patterns. So um, we do have the about and it's showing uh, the preview of them. We also have pages that have pattern, you know, the patterns and you can see what you can do. Um, the different uh, blocks also. So anytime I um, do a, I'm always gonna start with a group block. And then I'm going to um, add a heading. And then I can add an image because I want to put a picture so my name is Lauren WordPress And then after that, I'm going to put a little bio about myself.
Okay. And one thing to do for, for accessibility is to always make sure that your font is left justified, um, going into something like where you um, center align it. This gets a little confusing because of it bumping in and out. It's harder for people to read. And also um, the paragraph is actually a little too long. So what you can do is because of somebody's eyes and especially even um, a person that is an older person, um, this might be a little too much. Just break up the paragraphs. That's all you have to do, okay? And make it two to three sentences at a time, uh, which is good. Another thing is to add a um, list view. So, um, so here I'm going to add after, I'm going to put in a list, and then you can break things into. So if I do put that into a list, and then have that. I'll take a sentence. I'll take a sentence from here. Do three. Um, and this is good to um, do kind of in the middle of, of stuff to break it up, okay? Um, another fun thing to break up, let me take this last sentence here again, is to add a quote book. And we can put a quote in, and then we can change the background color of it. Um, I go with that, and I'm going to change the text. There we go. And let's look at that on the front end. There we go. So we have about, and then we have our bullet points. We have some paragraph, we have our quote, might be a little too big, but, um, and I noticed that my quote block, um, the Global Styles has it as a different font as opposed to my regular text. That's always a good thing, and, um, but um, that, those are those little things that you can play around with within there. I'm just looking at the questions. All right, so Catherine, you wanna um, walk me through the navigation block question? Yeah, so Sean asks if you can still put your navigation in a reusable block or whatever they're called now. And by the way, they're called uh, patterns or synced right. patterns in this case. Mm -hmm. And then they say that would be good for both your navigation and social media links. And I responded to say, I would pass this on to you. Maybe you can demo. I was suggesting typically if you want your navigation and your social links up in the header, you'd put that in the header template part. You would not need to create a, a new pattern. Your all themes come or most themes come with the header template part, and then that will be consistent on throughout the whole site. So you don't need to do anything from scratch there. Yeah. Um, and you can also um, add additional navigations. So if you wanted a different navigation, you can, um, well, you could wait. duplicate and then rename. If I had navigation two that I wanted, um, so then I could so 
So then I could add after. Oops. That's not what I want. There we go. Um, social icons. So you can have different navigation menus, and then you could also have different header templates parts, um, which is under patterns and go to header. And then we can add a new pattern there. So um, add a new template part. Um, and if you scroll here, you can see a header. Forget to name it. All right. So now I have a new header that I can choose from too. Um, yeah, the header and the, the footers are still template parts. Um, and they're still separate from actual patterns, um, which I think there's they're all the same, but um, they still have them as separate things. Okay. So now I have two headers that I can choose from. And I can pick which one I want to use depending on the, the page. Um, and this is something that you would have to go into your uh, template for to change the um, header to a different template. All right. So else? just, oh, just I, I'm just going to chime in and say like a, a use yeah. case where you might want to do this is let's say on the home page you want the header to have um, some a certain type of header, but then on other pages throughout your site you want a different kind of header, maybe with a smaller logo and other stuff. Yeah then you would need two different header template parts. Otherwise you only need one. If it's gonna be the same throughout the entire site, mm -hmm. you only need one. Yeah. There's a second question if you're ready. Yep. So Trish asks, why is the navigation using a different font for the login button and for the about page? As uh -huh. to, yeah. <laughs> uh, That's just because I had gone in and changed it. I. I'm a big, um, I don't like the, what, what is it? The serif? I must say, is it sans serif that doesn't have the little footers? Um, so I had gone in and changed it. Uh, the about was just the default and I hadn't gone in and changed it. That's all. Um, and those are those little design choices that you make um, ahead of time. And it probably should go back to, I need to click on the navigation and go into here, uh, the navigation settings and the typography for the whole block and change the font to, um, let's see. there we go. Um, so that's the Joust um, font. So now everything within that block so instead of doing it per per block, it's better to do it like as the whatever the container is and set that up as the overall font because yeah, that otherwise you get so confused about um, which font you're using where. So having it um, and because the, the logout was CSS, it's not that's on top of. And so that's why that's a different font. So I'd have to go in and change, take out that CSS that we put in to get this button back in. Um, and just FYI, it's not good accessibility to have if I hover over that it's all white. <laughs> um, it should be white and then the lettering would be a blue or black or something. So um, those are those little things that yeah, you wouldn't wanna have it white out there. 
Does that answer that? Yes, they were just uh, wondering why it looked that way and it makes sense, they said. And then Jean asked if we can move the login or out to the navigation. Jean, do you mean move it over to the left next to the list of pages? Just add it to the list in the navigation. Like yeah, yeah, I wanted to see if the font carried over. And yes, it did. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and, and that's what's nice about um, that I can just take this and kind of move it over just a little and it'll line up into that navigation. Um, and yes, you were right. Um, uh, you can also use the arrows up in the toolbar too to uh, change things around. So um, those are always fun. So if I wanted to put move the log in, got a little bit bigger, um, I can move that up to different places within it. Let's see, there we go. Let's try that again because you didn't see it. Okay. And those are just those arrows. There's a lot of things in the toolbar depending on the blocks that. Um, each block might have a couple different tools, uh, which is always interesting too. Um, and then another big thing that I really like is that if you're putting in your blocks and then you realize, oh, I forgot to do my group block, um, you can highlight uh, three different blocks, uh, click on the first one and then hit shift and click on the last one to highlight them all. And then click on the three dots and you have some tools here you can um i can't group those okay let's find let's go back to a page and i can can group those um and they always kind of remind you that there are some reviews that you need to um, save so and this is a new feature for 6.6. .6. Um, when you're in the site editor and you click on pages, um, it will give you your pages in this new um, view, which is kind of cool. I haven't played with that yet, but that's something new. And click on that. Um, all right. So if I went down here and try to ungroup something, there we go. Um, so this is grouped. I can ungroup it. Okay. And then I can take it, click on the first one, click on the second one. I can kind of bring that back up. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, because that paragraph. Okay, never mind. I can't do that one. Let me do another one. There we go. The column one. Okay, so we can um, ungroup that. Then we have all these query loops, and we can take the. Oh, I don't know if we can do the query loops. Yep, we can uh, group those together, um, and then we can also my other fun thing is rename. So those are always good. So fun little things like that, that um, can be used here. Okay. Now um, I am in the site editor under pages. So it looks a little bit different because because I'm in that, as opposed to um, if I go into all the way out to the dashboard and go to pages and I go to that home page, my list view looks a little bit different. It just has the content of what these blocks are. If I go into 
the site editor and then go to pages. So see this right here in pages. And this is what we're they're trying to get everyone to get to to this point is that you're just using the site editor to do all your, but it looks a little bit different. So there's some different tools, um, especially when you click on the list view. And, but it's nice because it'll show you what the template parts. So they're purple. And then it shows you the content block. Okay. So that's from the template. And then it'll tell you, oh, I'm using these from that page, from that home page within. So um, you can look at that. So there's two kind of two different ways you decide on which one you prefer to work in. Um, you might find some things don't have some of the um, the tools maybe, I don't know. I haven't researched it as much, but um, I, I kind of like the site editor version um, because then you can kind of see everything and you could go up to your header and then it says edit. So you could, you know, edit it from there too, which is nice instead of having to go back out and go into template parts. All right, we have four minutes. And um, so thank you everyone for uh, being part of all three of our talks. And if there's any other questions, please put them in the meetup for, um, for today. I do want to um, kind of give a shout out tomorrow. I'm co-hosting with Bud Krause. Um, he will be doing an overview of 6.6 .6 tomorrow. So Catherine put in the link for that. Um, join us at 2 p.m. Eastern. Um, Bud always does a great job on what's new. I uh, also want to uh, shout out to WordCamp US is coming up in September. Catherine and I will be there. So if you are in the um, Portland area, come out and visit us. And um, also there's gonna be some great talks. So keep an eye on, on that. Uh, and then in September, or I'm sorry, I believe it's October, is WordPress Accessibility uh, Day. It's a 24 hour event. And I know that they are still looking for volunteers and uh, mark your calendar because there's some great talks. And if you can um, help with being an MC, I did that last year. And, um, or if you like behind the scenes of like monitoring the Q and A, um, they're looking for volunteers. The last thing is that um, I'd really appreciate it if we at um, on Learn WordPress um, have a survey that we would love some input from you. And if you could fill out the Google form for us, uh, that would be great. And um, so that we can start planning some um, new and exciting stuff. And also, you know, make sure you check out our um, learning pathways and share those with um, people within your community or within, we have our, for users, our beginner and intermediate level. And if you are interested in being a developer, we have our beginner developer learning pathways. Uh, we will be working on our designer pathway will be coming soon. Um, so we're super excited. And as always, thank you so very much. Um, and I enjoyed this. Bye, everyone. Take care.